Missouri. I am juiced up because it is time to talk about one of my favorite regions in the state, the Rio Grande Valley. We're headed all the way down south, and who else would we bring on other than our girl Bella Michaels down there at KRGV? She's a sports reporter, a sports reporter and weekend news anchor. Bella, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. I just want to say thank you to you, Ashley and Mallory, for you know recognizing all the women in, in sports and tech and y'all are killing it. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. And that's a big reason why we like to have everyone on is so that we can get to know all of you better. Our viewers can get to know everyone better. So that leads me to the question. Give me a little bit of an elevator pitch on on who you are and and how you made your uh, way down to KRGV. For sure, yeah. I, as you said, the Rio Grande Valley, I know you like it because Matt, I was with Matt Stepp earlier today. (laughs) And he was talking about just how y'all have you know, your jokes and stuff. And he's like, Oh, you know, mess with Ashley a little. Oh, well he was calling you pickle. So, um, Oh, good. (laughs) But yeah, I was with him earlier and he said, she loves the RGV and the RGV is such a beautiful place. It really is big community um, oriented place. So I'm glad to have gotten here, but I'm originally from Chicago, um, born and raised. And I had never, you know, lived outside of there besides like when I interned at uh, BN sports in Miami for a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'm from Chicago, graduated from DePaul University with my master's in journalism and uh, got here in, to the RGV last year. And it's I just uh, celebrated my one year anniversary with KRGV. So it's been really fun. Uh, I always wanted to go into sports reporting. I loved soccer first and mm-hmm. foremost. And um, so just, you know, European soccer and NBA. And that's sort of what got me into it. And um, yeah, and I love languages. Foreign languages are are my thing. I like to uh, make sure that I think they break barriers. So anytime Mm -hmm. you can do interviews in multiple languages with foreign athletes, like it's always something that that'll help. Um, So yeah, that's that's sort of like the gist of, of what I like to do storytelling, multiple languages and coming from Chicago. <laughs> Man, that is awesome. That's I absolutely, <laughs> yeah, that is fantastic. Um, well, and I guess there's like, you always hear that high school football is so big in the state of Texas. You came down mm-hmm. from Chicago. So not only is high school football so big in the state of Texas, the reason that I love Texas high school football down in the RGV is, man, it means so much to those communities. What, what does that like for you to get to cover a place that looks at Texas high school football and says, this is special. It is so special that it literally, you feed off of it. When you're on the sidelines reporting, you could have had the craziest day and you could be so tired and drained because you all know what, you know, what it's like working in news. Mm -hmm. And then you will suddenly be revived by the passion of the, of the community that's at that game. Like people live and breathe Texas high school football here it is insane and it is amazing and so admirable especially coming from somewhere like Chicago where it's not quite it's not the same uh ambiance at all like it's a totally different vibe um and here it's just so special the families love it the players grow up from the moment they're like five six seven years old they're already thinking about like what they want to do and how they want to be when they're playing Texas high school football man that's awesome Bella I want to say something. There is a really good shot that one of the teams down there in the RGV could make a really deep Mm. playoff run in Edinburgh Vela. What is the whole hype around that team right now? Like you said, especially with this realignment that we had, um, it it shaped up, you know, two teams like Edinburgh Vela and PSJ North uh, got bumped down to 5A and now they're big Mm -hmm. 5A schools, which gave them a huge advantage. And because of that, now it, sh- it reshapes like, you know, the competition. And as you said, they can make it further. So Vela right now, as usual, Vela pretty much runs the RGV. It's been a powerhouse. But mm-hmm. this season, there is a big buzz around the team. They're, um, they're undefeated going into this game tonight. And it is our game of the week. And I'm pretty sure it's like everyone's game of the week. <laughs> yep, it's ours. <laughs> That's for yeah. sure. It's, exactly. So it, as, and it deserves to be. Um, so Vela is, is a great team. It lost. You know, it's star quarterback Chase Campbell from last year who had stepped in after, you know, being the understudy to Satello for a while and then coming in and having a blowout amazing season, you know, and then um, like a running back like P.J. Rivera. And now they got another running back that sort of has come in for him and taken a bigger lead. He was on the team before, but Jamal Polly, I think he's a big part of this whole buzz that they have going on 
Um, he's like averaging 145 yards per game. He's got like nine touchdowns this season and he didn't play last, last season that much because of, you know, PJ Rivera and all that, but he's going off this season. And I think that's their biggest threat because Vela is more of a running team and, um, they defensively, they also have another player that you, anyone that's watching the game tonight should be looking out for. He's going to be putting up a big threat to PSJ North offense, uh, Jake Duffner. Uh, he's been yep. going off. So I think just Vela altogether is, is a very dominant team. But I do need to say PSJ North, do mm-hmm. not sleep on them. I think that they – a lot of people are saying Vela is the top team in the Valley, but I will proudly stand by my uh, take that PSJ North, I think they're the top team in the Valley. Okay, I like it. Well, and, and so obviously you're that's a that's a big statement there with North, and I think that they're a team that we're very high on as well. I, I think that we all tend to lean a little bit more towards Villa, but if mm-hmm. if if you're right, man, we're gonna give you all the credit in the world. What is it about <laughs> PSJA North that you think is so special, and how do you think that where where do your eyes go when you look at the game tonight? Because that's that's huge. It's one of the biggest games in the valley in a very long time. It really is, and as you said, it's just. Honestly, PSJ North is a very special team. Uh, just going, taking just a quick summaries for the people that don't know what their season looked like last year. And it's actually quite good information to know go heading into this game. But their sophomore quarterback, he was, you know, projected to be one of the best quarterbacks in the Valley at that time. Ale Aparicio, just a sophomore, was heading into their actually regular season game against Vela. So around this time last year and... Uh, you know, a lot of hopes on him, and he ends up getting a season-ending injury by the defensive player, basically, that I just mentioned, by Vela, who's one of their best defensive players, Jake Duffner, Mm -hmm. um, last season. So now he's heading into this, and it ended his season. Uh, Julius Arredondo, another sophomore, took over for him, and, you know, that O-line that they had was, I really think the O-line doesn't get enough love they were able to produce top running backs between Jack Lugo and Isaac Gonzalez. They had over 4,000, 5,000 yards just on, like, it was just insane. Like these guys um, career wise and just everything that they did last season for PSJ North as a running team. And PSJ North has been known as a running team because their head coach Marcus Kaufman lives and dies by that. Mm -hmm. So heading into this season, what makes them so special is that they have that O-line that's, you know, they have a big O-line. They still have running backs like Jason Montez, who returned from last year, and then some new guys. But Ale Aparicio is back, and he's got an arm. He He's a dual threat. So they, they can run the ball, but they're, they can also pass really, really well. And, like, he's taken that running team that finished with, I believe it was, like, 933 total passing yards last season. But this season, he's already put up 638 yards. Wow. And touchdowns just passing. Like, that's already that's almost at, at where they were at last season for the whole season. So it's just a lot of a lot of stuff that I think PSJ North can do because they're a dual threat. Whereas Vela, looking at this game, like, they're they're actually heavier running the ball than, than PSJ North. And mm-hmm. I think their options are a little more limited compared to North. And, you know, people can judge me for saying that. I, I'm going <laughs> to... I don't care, um, but I think it's going to be a great matchup. They're two amazing teams, but I think PSJ North also has a great defense too, so I think it's going to come down to special teams tonight, to be quite honest, and Vela has a really good, you know, is, is good on that end. Uh, so we'll see. No, I love it. I love hearing the differing opinions, especially after, you know, you're down there with the teams. This is exactly what we're looking for. So let me tell you, we're going to hype you up <laughs> if PSJ North ends up winning tonight. But OK, <laughs> obviously, those are the two big teams, the teams yeah. that we think likely will make it the furthest when it looks up the playoff scope. But maybe take a step out of that. Other than those two teams, are there any other storylines in the RGV this year that if anyone from the state of Texas is going, hey, I would like to know something about the RGV, what would you say maybe yeah. one of those storylines would be? I I really think just do not sleep on PSJ North, but another team that I think is really dominant and has ha- had a very dominant start is Harlingen. And Harlingen is no stranger to success. And, you know, and it's his, if we're speaking historically to the program, just what I've learned within my, you know, I just made it to one year here, right? But um, <laughs> developing all those uh, connections with the coaches and the players and, and hearing from them, Harlingen is is back to dominance. These guys, they're on a 4-0 you know, 
Well, last week, actually, I was at their game in Roma. They chose uh, against Loreno United South. They chose that as like a medium, you know, halfway ground. And the game got basically called off due to lightning delays and all mm-hmm. that. But Harlingen was winning that one, too, all because of this one player that I think is has been doing amazing this season. He was injured last season, so he didn't get much what he wanted to do. But Isaiah Bell, he's a running back. He's got 10 touchdowns already um, this season. That's nearly half of Harlingen's total like 23 touchdowns they've scored this season so I think just as a team Harlingen is one to be looking out for um, if you're looking at RGB football and trying to figure out like okay who are the other teams what other talent is there besides uh, Vela and PSJ North uh, Harlingen's up there and you kind of already mentioned it we've talked about a couple players of course Jake Duffner um, of Edinburgh mm-hmm. Vela and Jason Montez mm-hmm. of PSJA North are there any other players maybe from a smaller classifications that are make it a little bit of noise this year that you have seen? Yeah, well, so I, I wouldn't say Westlaco is a smaller classification, but it's the first one that just popped up to my mind because they're also doing great, off to a great start. And they have, you know, Andres Sepulveda. He's already racked up, like, almost 700 yards and seven TDs for their, you know, 4-0 mm-hmm. start. So they that's one player to be looking out for. Um, Jamal, we mentioned, I think Julius... If we go back to PSJ North, I think Julius Arredondo, who was their quarterback last season that had to step up when Ale went down, mm-hmm. he's someone that I think is really underrated and didn't get as much love that I thought someone as a sophomore would, should should have gotten what he did. And this season, he's showing that he can really be a utility player and do whatever coach asks of him. He's been playing as a tight end, and most of these, he scored a bunch of touchdowns. I think he's already put up like four this season just – a dynamic duo and, and being able to adjust, you know, going from the star role and then getting it taken away and then going back and just being there for the team and not thinking of himself. I think Julius Arredondo is, is a good player to mention, too, if we're staying with the topic of tonight's big game, you know, just so mm-hmm. people can keep an eye out. But another cool storyline and, and player to I think that would be cool to mention is Emily Garcia. She made program history at uh, Sherryland Pioneer as a def- defensive back, first girl on the team. We love that. That's some, that is that's, very, very yeah. cool. Yeah, so that that is something I definitely, soon enough, I think I'm going to be doing a, a story on her. We'll see, but I think that's something crazy and, and cool. And the coach was talking about how, like, this is something that – she you know she's been working hard for and if you can do the work then you can be on the team so sure. that's that's really amazing that's awesome well please tag us in that if you end up yeah. doing the story we would yeah. absolutely love to see it um and finally bella we will actually well mallory's not gonna be able to make it but i will be heading down with the rest of the dave campbell's crew to your neck in the woods in uh, i think it's the third week of october <laughs> so when we head down there i've been before but i'm interested to get your take on like what's the one place that we absolutely have to eat at okay this is the thing i'm like so I've had so many different places here, right? Like I've tried so many different places, but I'm so caught onto this place called Taqueria Heredura in Far. Okay. Um, it's just like a smaller taco place. And as you know, like if you've been to the RGV, this mm-hmm. place, I have not had better Mexican food in my life. And I'm from Chicago. My roots, you know, I love Italian food. That's that's my, you know, what I've been used to growing up. Mm-hmm. And here, clearly, there's not as much Italian options. But if you're choosing Mexican and you want tacos, I'd go there. But if you want something where you can get anything and it's a nice, like, sports vibe, um, you can watch games. I always go to Yard House. That's my go-to because almost whatever I'm craving, they they have. And Can't go can wrong watch. there. Nice. All right. Well, I could. I I am confident in saying that I could eat Mexican food every single meal for the rest of my life and <laughs> not have a problem. So uh, <laughs> we'll be we'll be hitting up your place and far there. But she is Bella Michaels, uh, a sports reporter and weekend news anchor there at KRGV. Bella, we really appreciate you hopping on. Uh, have fun putting up with Matt Step tonight. If he gives you any problems, please let us know because we're the muscles around these parts. We'll we'll get after him. Thank you for having me. And when you come out, uh, I'll take you to Taqueria Heredura. Let's go. I'm holding you to that. That's what's up. Uh, Tell tell Alex we said hi, and we'll be seeing y'all soon. Really appreciate it, Bella. Thank you. Take care.